Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 11. And today, we are going to set up a mob farm using the cursed earth that we got at the end of last episode. That being this stuff over here. And the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is get a little bit more of this stuff so that we can actually get a decent-sized mob farm underway. And as I mentioned, I think a couple of times at the end of last episode, all we have to do to get a little bit more cursed earth is go ahead and do us something like this. I'm going to put half of it down there and about half of it down on this side. Now, you want to make sure that you have sufficient lighting around this at all times because if it's not lit up, monsters will spawn on it. You can do a quick check by pressing F7 on your keyboard. And if you don't see any red lines, then you know that you've done a brilliant job and there is no way for mobs to spawn. If we were to go ahead and look outside the window, we will see a lot of lines. <laughs> and lines mean that mobs can spawn there. And that's not a good thing. The same thing will happen on the Cursed Earth. If there are yellow lines there, it means that it's bad. Do be aware, though, this uh, pressing F7 does decrease your FPS pretty badly. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off real quick. And we're going to go ahead and just throw down a bunch more dirt around this Cursed Earth. And what should happen, uh, if we go ahead and just watch it for a little while, is it should start to spread to some of this dirt. Much like grass would if you were to place grass down next to you. Sorry, if you were to place dirt down next to some grass. It should eventually spread over... And we should get a bunch more cursed earth. Now, we are going to pick this stuff back up in about five minutes or so once all this is spreaded. Uh, because I do have other plans for this, as you'll uh, see later on in the episode. But for now, we kind of just want to get enough cursed earth to fully fill in this area over here. And whilst we're waiting for this to finish, which we will start doing in just a second. Here we go. Almost there. And hopefully we'll start to see some filling in. Maybe, possibly, not quite, but that's fine. We are going to start working on the way that we are going to grind up all of these mobs once they actually spawn, and we've got to figure out a way to get them all to a central point because there are a couple of, way we, uh, a couple of ways that we can kill these mobs once they spawn because they're going to start spawning in all over this room, and we need to find a way to push them into one point and then kill them. So there are a couple of ways that we can kill them. We can use the grinder from uh, uh, My Factory Reloaded. The grinder is simply a little block, like the uh, breeder that we have outside, but instead of breeding mobs, it just kills them. It will kill any mob within all pass passive or hostile, that is, within a 5x5 five five radius. So that's probably what we're actually going to use. You can also use spikes from extra utilities if we were go ahead and type in spikes or just spike without the O like that. These things over here, you can get iron, diamond, gold, and wooden spikes will all deal damage. The wooden spikes, I believe, don't actually kill the mobs. You have to have at least iron spikes in order for the mobs to die, but uh, they do do a lot of damage and take them down to, I think, one heart. And then the gold and the diamond ones will kill them faster, and I think give rarer drops as well. And this is still not spreading. That might take a while. We might have to leave it. But what we're going to use, we're going to use the grinder, and the way that we're going to get all of the mobs towards the grinder is using what are known as fans and conveyor belts from from uh, my factory reloaded and open blocks respectively not respectively because i said them the wrong way around but you get the idea you'll see it in a second so conveyor belts are actually a really cool block they are from Mine Factory Reloaded. And to make these, all we need is some rubber some iron and some redstone i've got ahead and made most of that stuff over here <laughs> so let's go ahead and do something like this gonna make two sets of those because i know for a fact that the length of said room that we're about to put these down in is 22 blocks now let me just do a quick check that is the wrong way around you'll see it's pushing me this way which is not what we want we want to turn that around and have it push mobs this way like so and i might i'm kind of oh no we don't no stop stop <laughs> stop we want it to go the other way there we go let's quickly fill in the floor and we want it to go how did i get this wrong there that's what we wanted to do we want to go like down like that and again, be careful if you press F7 now, we're still okay. Now we're not okay. Now mobs are gonna start spawning over there. We need to go put some torches down pretty quickly. I'm kind of thinking maybe this doesn't spread if there are torches down, which could well be a thing. I'm not actually too sure. But what we, what's going to happen is we're going to push all of the mobs that spawn on this pink dirt towards the middle. They're going to get pushed down along this conveyor belt. And for the time being, I'm just going to put torches down so we don't get any mobs spawning. And then at the end here, we're going to have a grinder that kills them all up nicely for us and then spits out all of the stuff that you would usually expect to get when you kill said mobs. Now, hmm, let me try something here real quick. I'm going to eat some apples and we're going to make it dark over in this corner, which might prove to be the worst idea I've ever had. Or it might prove to actually work. I'm going to leave that where it is. I'm going to get off uh, F7 so we don't have too much lag. 
And then what I'm going to do, just to be safe, is this. So, like, creepers don't come running at us uh, and jumping over this wall. So, we'll leave that. We'll see if it actually spreads in that corner. And on this side, if it only spreads in that corner, we know it has to be dark. If it doesn't, then we know we're good. So, the next thing that we're going to build might sound a bit odd. We're going to wait on the grinder a little bit. And actually, before we uh, start on the next thing, we're going to kind of work on the grinder, I guess, a little bit. Because the grinder does require some invar. So, we're going to go ahead and make a little bit of invar dust and start smelting that up. Like so. How are you? Are you doing? <laughs> oh. Oh, it's spreading. It's spreading. Look at that. It's spreading over in the corner there. Nice. Nice. Okay. Unfortunately, I think that means that we're going to have to have some mobs in there. And then we're going to have to kind of run in with torches and fight them off. Which is probably going to be a fun experience. But we'll get to that when it comes to it. Uh, let's go ahead and take all of you. That's not what I want to do at all. So what happened there is... Oh, quick. Turn that off. The... um. You can configure where the pulverizer will automatically output to. And by default, the... Uh, it's actually, again, it has. By default, this left-hand side here of the pulverizer is set to an output. And this will accept uh, stuff from all sides. So that went ahead and just output to this side. The alloy smelter was like, yeah, we'll take that. And just smelted it back up its iron, which is not at all what we wanted to do. What we want to do is do something like this. Get ourselves a bunch of invar. And then smelt it up in the alloy smelter. Whilst that's doing that, we will see we have zombies <laughs> running at us. You'll see it's got like particle effects it is a stronger than normal zombie which is why i put up my very strategic line of defense but uh, the next thing that we're going to do is build a smeltery from a tinker's construct which uh, for those who know what a tinker smeltery does might be a bit of an odd move but you'll see why in just a second and to make a tinker smeltery all you need is really a button of seared bricks so let's go ahead and let's go type in seared bricks it's probably gonna be easier this stuff over here in order to make this we need four seared brick which is made up by smelting grout. And to make grout, you need a bunch of sand, gravel, and clay. And believe it or not, before the episode started, I went ahead and got a bunch of sand, gravel, and clay. We'll take, like, all of that and all of that. And then we're going to go ahead and start smelting this stuff up. Like so. And I think with that, what I'm going to have to do is we'll quickly go ahead and make ourselves the grinder. And then we're probably going to have to sit around and wait. Wait for the, uh, the grout to finish smelting. Wait for the uh, cursed earth to finish spreading, which is going to require me to go in there and break a bunch of torches. But uh, let's go ahead and make this guy real quick. Grinder. Like so. Need another machine frame. Made one of these last episode for the pulverizer. Really easy stuff. And uh, that is not what I want to do there. I want to do this and make one of you. We then need two more of these. One and two. Coil done. Books should be fairly easy. We made quite a lot of those towards the end of last episode. Invar sword done. And grinder. Nice. I guess it's the grinder. And actually what we could do, I guess, if we want to kind of trick this guy a little bit, is break this. Stick that down there. And then wire this thing up. If we can wire that up, it will actually start to kill him uh, while he stood there. So let's go ahead and grab some conduits from Endwire. We actually have them on us already. And we do actually have enough stuff to make another set. So I'm going to do that because I think we're probably going to need them this episode. So I'll take those. And then let's see if we can actually hook this thing up. Let's go ahead and just break the floor a little bit. I think there's a conduit somewhere around there. And we'll get to this little trap door uh, a little bit later on in the episode after we've made the Tinker's Smeltery. But for now... Let's do something like this. We'll put you there, and I'm going to put... Hmm. For now, I'm going to put that there, even though I kind of don't... Oh, that's a creeper. No, 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 no. Please don't kill me. There we go. That was not what I wanted to do. My gosh. All right, we got a, we got a bit of a room to fix. Not a problem. Not a problem. That that should be fine. Actually, while, this is, uh, while we're here, we might as well go ahead and turn all of this off. Which is probably going to result in some pretty rapid mob spawning. Come on, get out of here. Let's break all these. There we go. That's a creeper again. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, did he break the grinder? Do we seriously have to go make another grinder now? Really? Okay, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hook this up. I'm going to go make another grinder, apparently. I'm going to wait for the grout to finish melting, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, we've got ourselves a stack and 50 of this seared brick. And what we're going to start to do is construct our ting of smeltery, which I've decided... Oh, my God, he's going to get attacked by spiders. Get out of here. Get out of here. 
didn't account for spiders with my super defensive wall, which, anyway, which I've decided is going to go in this little spot here next to the rest of our Tinker stuff. So, the first thing we need to do is just make a bunch of this seared brick, or should I say these seared brick blocks, because uh, these are called seared bricks, and these are called seared brick. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and if we go ahead and grab those, and then we can just start to fill in this floor like so. And you want to make it three by three, and then have some stuff there, some stuff there. We want to have a couple more of these around here. You don't want to make too many, because we do need these seared bricks for other things. But we're going to go ahead and finish this up like so. Make one more set of bricks, and then do this. Ooh, actually, no, we're not. We're not. We're going to leave it like that. And basically, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to head on over here. We're going to make ourselves a controller which looks like this, a semi-electric controller. We're going to make ourselves a drain, which looks something like this. And we're going to make ourselves a tank, which I believe is just this with glass in the middle, I want to say. And I guess we're about to find out. It is. Nice. We'll take that. And all we need to do to finish up the smell tray is go ahead and throw this down like so. You can put these down in any order you want, and actually you can put them anywhere on the smell tray apart from in the floor, and then we're going to have you there, and you there, and if you've done it right, the front wall lights up. Nice! And also, in the newest version of uh, Tinker's Construct, you can actually make this thing uh, as, really, I think as big as you want. Uh, I think the dimensions you can have in the middle here are 3x3, 5x5, 9x9, or just 1x1, one one, uh, the inside dimension. So you can make this thing pretty big or pretty small. We're going to go with the standard 3x3 three three size. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and just cover this back up like so. And what we need to do now is fill this little tank up with lava. And then we can start to get to work using the Tinker Smeltery. Now, thankfully, I did go ahead and grab a bucket of lava a little while ago. So we can go ahead and throw that in there. We are going to need a little bit more in the future. Our Cursed Earth is doing reasonably well, actually. It's kind of spreading really well on this side, maybe not so well on this side. It might be the torches in here that are kind of uh, putting it off. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of those real quick. And hopefully that will spread all the way down. I don't know if that is what's causing it, but it might be. So we'll go ahead and take that off. And also there were torches down here. So what I might do... Oh, I, don't, I really don't want to get rid of these. I don't think they're going to be a problem because there were torches down there as well. So I'm going to leave those for now and hope, <laughs> and hope that it finishes spreading. Flipping spiders every time. Where are you? I'm coming to get you. Okay, I don't know where it is. But luckily, we have the gravestone mod on. So we can just go ahead and break ourselves this gravestone. And we should get all our stuff back. Nice. Let's go ahead and put our armor on before we die again. And basically, what we can use the Tinker Smeltery for is to make alloys. And if we go ahead and look at the recipe for a... Where the... Where the heck is it? What the heck? I'm getting, I'm getting attacked by an invisible spider. What the heck? What? Serious? No, wait. What? What the? What? I'm gonna go to the title screen. Okay, he's no longer as invisible as he once was. I'm not quite sure what happened there. There must have been a bit of a visual glitch at some point. But my gosh, that was absolutely horrible. Let's just get, get, you're not going to beat me. Again. Okay. <laughs> okay, you beat me that time. You're not going to, there we go. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, let's get our stuff back and let's try and continue where we left off. So we were going to go ahead and make some drawbridges. Now, the reason that I wanted to make a drawbridge this little block over here, again, this is from Tinker's Mechworks, which is by the same person who made uh, Tinker's Construct and Tinker's Steelworks. And the reason why I wanted to make this guy is because what we can do with the drawbridge is we can actually, as you guessed, sort of uh, extract, extract, no, sort of retract. And I don't know what the word for the opposite of retract would be. Um, expand? And retract, maybe? But basically, we can put a drawbridge down, and we can uh, flick a lever, and the drawbridge will go ahead and deploy sort of the cop. For, for instance, if this here was a drawbridge, we'd stick a lever behind it, and it would deploy the, the gravel. We then turn off the lever, and what it would do is it would suck the gravel back in, waiting for us to flick the lever again, at which point it would put it back down. This is sometimes useful to act as a drawbridge. You can use it for your buildings if you so wish in your bases. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook all of... Let's put our jetpack back on. I'm going to hook up all of this cursed earth to drawbridges. So what we can do is with one lever, which is why we have uh, these little alleyways down there. With one lever, we can go ahead and just flick the whole system off. And all of this cursed earth will disappear into the walls. And none of the mobs will keep spawning. Which will make it a lot easier to get in here and do some maintenance if anything were to go wrong. So... 
in order to make these guys over here the drawbridges, we need a couple of things. We need a bunch of dispensers, which should be fine because we have a lot of cobblestone, a lot of redstone, and thanks to our new uh, sheep farm, we have access to a lot of string, and our wood farm gives us access to a lot of sticks, which is pretty nice. But the hardest thing we're going to need is some aluminum brass and some tinker's alloy, which is basically bronze, and we can make both of these in the tinker's smeltery. So aluminum brass is this stuff up here. To make this, all we have to do is go ahead and throw in... If you make your way through uh, uh, any aisle a bit, you'll find that you put, uh, it says 48 millibuckets and 16 millibuckets, which is basically a 3 to 1 ratio. So every 3 aluminium and 1 copper that you put into here will turn into a couple of ingots of aluminium brass. So, if we were to go ahead and grab some aluminium, like so, and grab ourselves some copper, like so, and put in 3 of these, I'm actually going to put in 6. And then I'm going to put in two of these. And if we let that smelt up, that should go ahead and I think give us maybe actually eight ingots of aluminium brass, which would be quite nice. We are going to need 44 of these drawbridges for it to actually work how we want it. So we need a ton of these drawbridges. So that's a lot of dispensers, uh, a lot of redstone, a lot of all this other stuff. Uh, by the way, this thing here, the blank cast, is also made using the aluminium brass here. All we need to make that is a casting table. And a casting table is actually really easy to make. It is just something like that boom casting table done so we'll take that and we'll throw that down right about there and as it turns out we need a little bit more a tiny little bit more seared brick in order to make this work as we want it to so i think we're actually gonna have to go ahead and grab a little bit more sand we do have a bunch of clay i i made sure clay was not an object let's go ahead and sleep real quick Grab some more sand, and the, where, oh yeah, the, I was about to say, where were the monsters? There were no monsters nearby, and as it turns out, there are actually monsters right through the wall. So, I guess we're going to brave it out in the night, in the darkness, and try and get some sand and not get killed. We've got this. We've got, we've got this. It's fine. It's fine. Thankfully, this drill also acts as a shovel, so we've got this. A very fast shovel at that, and we should probably make this look a bit nicer at some point in the future. By the way, you can also put cobblestone into the pulverizer or the macerator and get sand that way as well, which is probably something we should have done. But hey, we've done now. We've done it. It's fine. We're just going to run. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So a little bit more grout. Let's go ahead and smelt that up. You can also make the smeltery taller, by the way. Uh, if we were to add a second layer to this, so if we had to add more seared bricks, something like this... Oh, more flipping spiders. Thankfully, we can kind of fly up out of the... I was going to say out of their range, but we, thankfully, we can fly up and do this. Thank gosh. But uh, what we could do is we can go ahead and add more layers like this. If we did it all the way around, it would actually increase the capacity of the, t of the smell tray, which is pretty nice. But you'll see we have eight ingots of aluminium brass. And what we need to do now is make what's known as an ingot cast. And the way that I'm going to do that is actually using this uh, aluminum ingot here. We're going to throw it down right about there. And then all we need now is a faucet which is made something like this. One, two, three. And then if we stick the faucet onto the drain, like so, we can run the uh, aluminium brass over the aluminium, and we get ourselves an ingot cast. And then what we can do is we can run more into it, and we get aluminium brass ingots, which is kind of cool. So, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to wait a button more time for this to finish. I'm going to sit here and make a ton of aluminium, uh, aluminium brass, enough to make 44 of these drawbridges. And I'll, go ahead, I'll also go ahead and make enough uh, bronze to do this as well. You can do the same thing. You can throw three copper and one tin into the smeltery and get yourself, I think, four bronze out of that uh, the exact same way. So, I'm going to go ahead and do all that stuff, and I'll be back in in a second okay so a really long time later and i'm talking like a really long time later we are almost done i think so what i've gone ahead and done is i made the smeltery a second level tall if we go ahead and break through here you'll see the whole smeltery is now if we can go ahead and break through there two levels tall i did break out to the outside world a little bit i'll have to patch that up uh, in a bit but for now it's too high and i also went ahead and made this little guy down here the casting basin which basically allows you to pull nine ingots out of the smeltery at a time and make a block. For example, we've got some molten bronze here that's about to finish off our set if we were to go ahead and pull out the rest of it. Uh, also, bear in mind, if you don't have nine ingots in the smeltery, it won't be able to pull them all out. But if it does, 
it should eventually form into a block that you can right click it and you will get yourself some blocks of bronze we are almost out of copper and tin to the point where I actually I had to go get more copper between the time we could have and now I went mining to get some more copper we needed that much of the stuff I also went ahead and made 44 bows we have all of those so now we should be able to go ahead and throw all of this into the AE system. We're going to have to turn all of these into ingots, which I think is about 180 ingots in total, and then make ourselves 44 of these dispensers, and then go ahead and do something like this and get 42. No, what are we missing? What are we missing? We're missing a little bit. We're missing four ingots of aluminium brass, and we have seven. Woo! We have what it takes. We can go ahead. We can get rid of this. I also went ahead and got a little bit more obsidian. Fixed up my tool here. Uh, if I can find the uh, the cut. Because I don't stop recording when I cut away. Uh, if I can find the cut, I'll show you me repairing the tool. It's really easy to do. And we can go ahead and finish off pulling this stuff out. And then we should be able to start setting some of this stuff over here up. Which will be quite nice. It looks like all of that has fully gone ahead and turned into Cursed Earth, which is pretty nice. Uh, you'll see we do have a nice amount of stuff in here now, which is kind of cool. Ten Ender Pearls is, is really nice indeed. That's from all the Ender Minis and Endermen that have spawned in there and kind of just walked towards me. Uh, a lot of bones, a lot of zombies, not actually a lot of gunpowder as well. I uh, didn't think there'd be as much gunpowder, but apparently I was wrong there. And now we should be able to do that. Nice, I guess it's 44 drawbridges. Wow, that was expensive. That was really, really expensive. But now, let's go ahead and grab some torches. And let's see about lighting this place up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break through this wall here a little bit. So that I can start lighting this place up without having to actually go in there. Because I'm kind of scared of going in there. And I don't want more mobs spawning once we're in. So we're going to kind of just break this wall a little bit. Don't get killed by that creeper it's okay if it kills other things that's fine as long as they're not us there we go we can't really do much about the other side so i guess it's just oh what the wow what the heck how did you get out yeah get out of here get out of how did you get what what there is no way you fit through one of them walls no way i am calling hacks okay let's try drag everyone towards the grinder the grinder has stopped working. That's because this thing's full. Withering dust. And a splash potion of decay. Nice. Yeah, if we can pull them all this way. And have them attack us. Attacking us. Oh my gosh. You see the health on that thing. If you look at the top. It tell no, that's us dead. <laughs> that would be our death. <laughs> if you look at the top, it does tell you. Uh, Willow will tell you how much. Uh, how many hearts they have. Where was he? Where was he? I swear, we are seeing more and more and more of these invisible flipping... They are, they're invisible. I'm going to have to re-log. Re what the heck? Okay, again, a really long time later. Like, far, far too long later. I've been doing this episode forever now. Uh, if we were to go ahead and press J, which is the uh, the, the, the the default key binding to the journey map, which is the mini-map uh, for this mod pack, and we were to click waypoints up here, you could see just how many times I died trying to get all of my stuff back from those guys. And my gosh, that was a lot of deaths. I'm going to leave the waypoint for the dungeons there. Whew, okay. Right. <laughs> I think... We are now good to go. I went ahead and I used my obsidian shovel to mine up all of the stuff, uh, all of the cursed earth out of here. I did have to go and get like four more pieces of obsidian. Uh, and by the way, the way that you repair it is like this. There you go. A fully repaired tool. Um, because this thing is so fragile. It is terrible. We'd have to get, we're going to have to put some modifiers on that to make it a bit better. But anyway, now that we've got all this space, what we can go ahead and do is get rid of all these like this and replace them all with drawbridges and once you got all those drawbridges down we can go ahead and we can start to throw some cursed earth into them we're gonna put three in each and it's gonna look something like this so let's see if we can get all these down right first time that would be nice and we missed one no that's fine i think we should be okay and then all we have to do is for instance we'll use this one as an and as, as an ah my voice is just my words are everywhere as an example we'll throw three cursed earth in there and then we'll go downstairs uh, after we grab a quick lever and we should be able to turn it on and dispense that cursed earth okay let's go have a look let's see if all of our hard work and effort was actually worth anything at all that's going to go down right about there. So we are going to go ahead and make a bit more room over here. Like that. And then we have to put some more. That, mm, that should be fine. Which means we have to go like this. Yeah, that should be fine. And then we'll go ahead and if we stick the lever down and flick it. 
you hear it dispense, and if we go ahead and have a look, ta-da, Cursed Earth. And then we can do the same thing again, flick it off. It retracts. Ta-da, it's done. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and use another nifty little item that is actually from a different mod altogether. This one is from Red Power, and that is Red Alloy Wire. That's this stuff over here, and it's made using three Red Alloy ingots. We're going to need quite a few of these. Uh, I think about maybe four sets of this stuff, and this is made by smelting Red Iron Compound, which is made using Iron and Redstone. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. This stuff's really expensive. Um, no, we can make ten. Okay. Hopefully, 10 will be enough. I also made some more uh, conductive iron because I think we one of the creepers broke one of the cables for... Yeah, you can see that the cables broke because I don't think this guy's getting any power right now. Uh, thankfully, he's not really using any power, which is nice, but he's also not getting any, which is less nice. So let's go ahead and grab some conduit binder. Again, make ourselves some more conduits so that guy gets some power. And hopefully... We should be able to hook some of this stuff up. I might have to go find some more redstone, which would be a bit of a pain, but that wouldn't be too bad. We'll throw you down there. That guy should continue to get power now, which is kind of essential. We're going to get three sets, which is 36. Not quite enough, because obviously we need 44 in order for this to work. So that's a bit of a pain. We are going to need to get uh, two more of these, which is actually 16 more redstone uh, if we want that to work. Which again, wow, that's a lot of redstone that we've just used. But uh, anyway, the, just for, for to show off how this is going to work, we are going to go ahead and we are going to have red alloy wire down the back of all of these, like so. Start there, and we're going to have it run all the way along. And back down like this. So basically what this means is we can go ahead and take that lever. Stick it down. Say, for now it's going to go, I guess, like maybe here. Eventually it's going to be on a wall up uh, by the front of the base. Not by the, well, show you in a second. Eventually it's going to be up here somewhere. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill all these up with three Cursed Earth. And once we have Cursed Earth in all of them, what we can do is we can head on down here. We can flick the lever again. And if we're quick... It deploys all of the cursed earth at once. And again, one more time, turn it off. And it retracts all the cursed earth. Nice. And we're going to do that for the exact same thing for the second side. We can't do it just yet because although we have enough drawbridges and enough cursed earth, we don't have enough red ally wire. So I'm going to kind of, for the, just for the purpose of this episode, because it's already taken me like a few hours to make this, I'm going to go ahead and leave, just do this side, and we'll do this side uh, between episodes. So the final thing that we're going to do is make a button of fans. Now fans are added by another mod. This one is open blocks. And I think, what else did we make from open blocks today? We made the... I have no idea. I have no idea what else we made from open blocks today. We made something else from open blocks, but I can't remember what it was. So we're just going to go ahead and make these fans. And these fans are this thing down here. And in order to make this, we just need a slab of some kind, iron, and more iron. So basically, a butt ton of iron. And hopefully we have more in here. Yes, we do. Hopefully that's enough. I, yeah, I didn't really calculate how much we we're going to need. I kind of just assumed we'd have enough. I think three sets should be fine. Then we'll go ahead and I'm going to use cobblestone slabs because we have a butt ton of cobblestone at our disposal. So we'll just do that and get rid of some junk that we don't need just on us. And then do this and throw all of those in there. Go ahead and do that. And then we can grab 56 fans, which is more than, more than enough because we only needed 44, which is the same amount as the... Uh, dispensers and all that stuff. And these guys are going to go. Now, I had a plan for these, but I've just realized my dispensers kind of ruined that plan. These are going to go, I guess, directly on top of the dispensers. Now, what we might have to do, these things do require a redstone signal to turn on. For those who don't know what these do, these do exactly what you'd expect. They basically push uh, push you away. So if you turn these on, they basically push you. And they're going to do the same things to the mobs. Once the Cursed Earth's down, it's going to go ahead and push them onto this uh, conveyor belt in the middle. We're going to have these same fans on the opposite side, pushing, the, pushing them back. So they should get pushed this way and this way, and eventually it'll even out. And they'll end up just being stuck on that conveyor belt, which will, of course, push them towards the grinder. And that's kind of just how that should work work so let's do this and i think for this side what we're gonna have to do is we're probably gonna have to use more conductive alloy now does that work question time does that, that turn the fans on it does nice so i think actually let's see if this works if i was to say turn that off break this if i was to just put the alloy straight onto the drawbridge and then flick it 
Does that both turn the fan on and activate the drawbridge? It does. Nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the move, move all of this onto here. I'm going to go put fans down all the way along the other side over here. Make sure they're active. And then I'll come back in a second to turn it all on and see if it works. Okay, so because we didn't have enough red alloy wire to fill all of this side up, what I've gone ahead and done is just thrown down levers on all of these sides. They are all filled up with all of the cursed earth that they need. So, all we should have to do is I can hear the mob spawning already. Hopefully, we can click all these on fast enough. They should also be turning on the fans. There we go. All right, let's head on up and let's turn on the other side. After we look through the glass there. Look at that, they're all on this side. Let's turn that side on as well. Oh my gosh. Spiders. Okay, some of them are in the floor. That's fine. The grinder should start working any second as I kill them. Please. That would be beautiful. But yeah, if I go ahead and turn that off real quick and kind of watch it happen. There we go. And we'll turn it back on. There we go. Eventually, that, that one lever there will work on both sides. And there we go. It's kind of just spitting random junk at us. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up just a really big chest. And the way I'm going to do that is by simply surrounding a chest with iron, if we have enough of the stuff, which we do. Uh, not loads, but we have enough to make this iron chest. And for now, I'm just going to stick this down back here, which is just a bigger version of a normal chest, like so. Eventually, what we'll do is we'll set up individual barrels from Jabba for each of the things we want to keep. For instance, uh, the emerald, uh, the, uh, not emeralds, the ender pearls, the gunpowder, the zombie brains, the bones, etc., and we'll start to bin the stuff that we don't want, like the bows and the sticks and the arrows and stuff like that. We might keep the arrows, but this looks like it's working. All the mobs are spawning in. They're all getting pushed into the middle, as they will do. You'll see if we come over here, we kind of get pushed between both sides as well. And then when they get down here, they die. Now, the spiders seem to be doing a pretty good job of avoiding the conveyor belts. Although that guy is not. The one that's on the roof is, and the one that's in the corner over there is doing a very good job of avoiding it. Is that sword in here? There is a sword. Ah, get out of here. Get out of here. And eventually... Ah, I'm not dying again. I'm not dying again. No, no. no. <laughs> Why? Why you do this to me, game? Just to... <laughs> Okay, well, with that, guys, I'm going to end the episode there on a high note. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, and I will see you guys next time.